Hi, so um, this is going to be the first tutorial in a series of lighting tutorials and <clears throat> today's video is going to be about um, getting to grips with some basic lighting concepts inside of Maya. Um, we're going to be figuring out where everything lives, um, what does what, and we might start to touch on some more intermediate ideas, but um, we probably won't be spending too long on those um, as I'll be covering those topics in more detail in the upcoming videos. Um, so yeah, just a bit of housekeeping really um, to get out of the way, but um, we're a new channel and it would be absolutely amazing if um, we got some subscriptions to this channel. Um, and you know, uh, maybe one or two likes if you like the video. Um, we also love to hear from you in the comments, so please leave one if you feel like you'd like to say something. Um, so lighting. Lighting is such an important aspect to everything in the world of 3D, um, whether that is um, to help tell a particular story or add dramatic effect to, to a scenario, um, even for lighting up models and presenting them in a way that really reflects um, the quality and time you've put in. Um, lights can look realistic or stylized, they can um, be hard or soft, they can be warm or cool, um, they can have a really sharp decay or a long one. Um, there are many creative decisions to be made and these all have a big effect on the way in which our audience interprets our work. Um, so there are already some fantastic tutorials out there on lighting. Um, I'm thinking of artists like Arvid Schneider, um, Brett, LeBlanc, uh, Brett LeBlanc, um, and yeah, I'm by no means trying to undermine anyone's process. Uh, in fact, quite the opposite. Um, I and Atanella, we have been helped out so many times from um, the amazing community of artists on the web. And I'm a strong believer in community and crediting those that have helped me and us out over the years. So, um, yeah, that being said, sometimes it's easy to overlook the fact that, you know, we all learn in different ways. Um, I think most people can relate to that experience of that one teacher who got the most out of them when they were in school. Um, it, not, it might not have been because um, they were more qualified than any other teacher or had more experience, but they were able to speak to you on a level that you could really relate with. Um, so yeah, I hope that you'll be able to find that person who speaks to you in that way. But um, that's enough of that sentimentality. Um, and yeah, let's, let's crack on and, um, start with, um, getting some, getting some lights in the scene. So, um, as for the setup, um, I'm probably just going to set it all up with, with you here. Um, because it, it, I thought it'd be valuable to break down that process as well. Okay. So, what I will be ensuring is that I'm changing my animation preferences to um, meters. Um, so that I've got some real world scale that I can uh, work with. I'm also going to use um, one of the people that come with, uh, come with Maya. Okay, so if you go up to Windows and down to Content Browser, um, and look under modeling people. We've got four, um, you know, template people here that, you know, serve us um, well for this sort of tutorial when we're doing some lighting. Um, they have got some textures and things like that. Um, so, um, yeah, all I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on um, one of these, get them into the viewport, and now we've got a sort of scale reference going on. And that's going to be key for us because we want to make sure that our lights are scaled accordingly. Um, so next thing, let's just create a little bit of a floor. So I'm going to create a plane. 
in that plane, I'm just going to scale up a little bit. Um, and probably what I'll do is I'll just go into edge selection mode and I will double click um, get those edges control E um, and then move those upwards and just give us a little bit of a room to work with okay well, that's cool okay so um yeah let's set up a render view as well just so we've got something going on um where we can um see our render so i'm going to um what am i going to do i'm going to split my panel so i'm going to go up to panels down to um layouts and then two panes side by side i'll go with this one And what I'll do is I'll set up a camera so that one of these um, views is actually a camera and the other one is my perspective. So I can go up to create, down to cameras. I'm just going to insert a camera this way. And I'm, I'm just going to hit R and scale this camera up a little bit. And then position it a little bit. So I'm going to bring it back. I can probably look through this camera now. So if I go up to panels, down to perspective and camera one, you can see now that as we move our camera, we've got our camera view on the on the left hand side. Um, again, the way that I'm going to be rendering is I'm going to render in, in the viewport. So if I go up to renderer and then down to Arnold. I'll get this little floating window, which I will probably dock down here. Okay, um, I'm probably just going to create a save as well, just so we've got um, an easy control less, just to make sure we, we don't get any crashes. And then in my render settings, um, I'm going to use my GPU, um, however, it's absolutely fine to use your CPU. It's not going to have any bearing on anything. Um, and let's just have a look. If you haven't got your, your uh, if you're not going to be using your viewport, you can change your uh, render resolution in here. Okay. So we won't see anything at the moment because we haven't got any lights in our scene. But it would be nice if it just kicked off. There we go. Right, no lights in our scene. So to um, place a light, um, we have two, two places that we can access our lights from. Um, the first one is um, under Arnold. If you go up to Arnold, down to Lights, I'm just going to tear this off a minute. Um, this is the first place where we can access our lights from. Um, and, you know, predominantly you will probably be using this menu. The other place is over here under Create, down to Lights. And this is, um, these are Maya's lights, okay? So these are the default. And lights and these ones on the right are the Arnold lights so it's important to note um, that for the most part you're probably going to be using if you're using the Arnold renderer you're probably going to be using area lights you're going to be using sky dome lights mesh lights um, you know you might be using some photometric lights as well which are, which we'll talk about in a little bit um, light portals are handy and physical sky so you'd be using all of these um, but for the list on the left um, we won't be using ambient light it's not compatible with Arnold um, and same for the same for the volume light 
so from this menu you will probably use be using spotlights and directional lights and um, you might be possibly using some point lights every now and then as well so what we'll start with is we'll start with an area light so I'm going to click that and have a look at my scene and what I'll do is I'll just bring this out a bit and I'm going to hit R and I'm going to start to scale this up okay the size of the light is important okay because it's to do with the shadows and the and the um, softness of those shadows so a smaller light will give you a sharper um, a sharper shadow and a, a larger light will give you more more of a soft shadow so in order to start seeing this in the viewport um, I'm going to increase the exposure the exposure um, is the one that I will be using for the most part um, and I usually start you know on if I if I'm set to meters I will be starting at around 15 that's usually a good sort of starting point um, you can think of these as as being like stops almost um, and it can be a bit confusing um, because intensity is here as well but what I what I tend to do is just leave intensity at one and increase the exposure. Okay, so you can see that we've got some we've got some light coming into the scene. If I increase this even more. And uh, let's change the focal length of the camera. Um, let's increase that to something a bit closer. Okay, so at the moment our area light is right in the middle at the front and by by default this um, area light will be emitting light in 180 degrees. So I'm not sure if we can preview this. Yeah, we can. So you can see here in the viewport that, that our spread is 180 degrees. And um, we've got we've got um, a spread down here, which we can bring down. And as we bring that down, you won't you won't see this in the viewport. Um, but as you start to bring that spread down, you can see that you're starting to focus that light. And what you'll find is that the in, the exposure will become because it's becoming more focused. It's becoming more intense in those areas. So you often have to cater for that by bringing your by bringing your exposure down um, so let's leave that at one for a minute in the world of lighting we have um, you know l lights are often measured in on the Kelvin scale and um, Kelvin scale is basically a series of numbers um, and I've got an example here. This is from the Arnold website. Um, and these numbers equate to um, the color of the light, essentially. So um, we, you can see here in our area light, we've got a little checkbox called uh, use color temperature. And by default, we will start at 6,500, which is daylight. If you have a look at it on this scale, we've got 6,500 6, over here, and we can see that it's it's white. It's pretty white. As the as the number increases, it gets cooler until you get to a fairly blue color, and then if you go the other way, you get warmer until you get to a red color. So. Usually, if I'm trying to emulate, um, you know, photorealism or something like this, then I will I will be using the color temperature um, for the most part. But you know, you don't you don't have to. You can come up here and you can use this color 
um, you can use this color um, picker and you can pick colors yourself. So if you wanted to go for that um, idea, perhaps that you're putting a gel over the light source or something like this, then you can absolutely come in and, and use this as creatively as you'd, you'd like to. Um, and then as soon as you hit that use color temperature, you'll notice that it overwrites the color. So as long as you've got this checked on, this color doesn't um, affect uh, affect the lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to decrease this. Well, let's let's push this one up into the blue a little bit. So let's go up to eight and a half or something like this. And the nice thing that we can do with our um, with our light selected is if we go to panels, perspective. Uh, just underneath perspective, we've got look through selected, and that will actually allow us to move the light around as if it's, you know, as if it's a camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to get this little bit of an angle going on, so sort of looking down this way, and we'll be going through some different lighting techniques in some upcoming videos um, and we'll be looking at we'll be looking at some Rembrandt lighting which we've just created here um, and you can see the little triangle under under the eye over on the right hand side um, so you know at the moment I would say I'm quite happy with this you know quite happy with this placement um, I'm going to have a look at what bringing the spread down a little bit does Okay, and it's making it a bit more dramatic. So I might bring the exposure down just a touch. Okay, that's looking cool. All right, so area lights, what else have we got in here? Um, we've got, so let's go back to the perspective view. I might go to my perspective view just so we can see what's going on with this light a little bit better. Um, so yeah, we've got spread, and you can see as we as we move the spread around, we're we're focusing that light. Our resolution is to do um, with the um, with the sort of density of the of the of the light source itself. So um, at the moment, our resolution of five twelve. If you know, this is good for previews. If we wanted to um, do a sort of final render, we'd probably increase this a little bit. Um, we've got roundness here. So as we move the slider up on the roundness, you're starting to see it's rounding off those square corners until pretty much you've got a circle there. Um, we've got soft edge, which again has, it does like, uh, has like a little inset is softening that square out a bit. We've got samples, so our samples is to do with our noise. Um, if we zoom in, have a look down here, you can see that we've got a fair bit of noise in our shadow. And if we were to increase the sample count here, then what you'll start to notice is that noise starts to smooth out a little bit. Okay, so, um, you know, previewing, again, I'll be leaving that at one, but when we're rendering, I will be increasing that to two, perhaps, um, depending on the scenario, obviously. Okay, um, and then we've got things like, so we've got normalize. So normalize um, essentially is to do with the size of the light. So if we've got normalize checked on and we scale our light source,
what you should notice is that the intensity of the light gets less as the light gets bigger. And then when the light gets smaller, it gets more intense. Okay, if we don't have this checked on and we let's bring let's bring our exposure down a little bit now to compensate. So now as we're scaling up and we're scaling down, you'll notice that nothing's changing. The size of the light doesn't matter, it's 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 just this number that you have in here. So usually you leave this checked on um, but it's up to you you know it's up to you how you'd prefer to work that's uh, that's just how I'd like to do it and then yeah we've got things like shadow density shadow color which generally just stay where they are um, and then we've got our visibility controls down at the bottom so these are helpful because um, they allow us to take the influence of the light out of um, different different um, channels essentially. So if I rotate my camera around a little bit, have a look up at this light, you'll notice that I can't see the light um, and that's because there is no camera contribution. So if I increase this number up to one, you will start to see that this light is coming back in now increase the intensity you can see that quite clearly okay so sometimes you know you you will need and you will want to bring that that light source in and that is how you do that um, and by default um, you cannot see your light sources um, in in a reflection but if you wanted to um, then not in a reflection in in the transmission sorry um but if you wanted to you could increase that and and that would that would change that okay so i'll get on to light filters in a minute let's just um let's just throw in a couple of other lights so back up to arnold down to lights this time i will use a um, We'll use a, I'll delete that, go back over to create and, and go to the, the Maya lights over here and show a spotlight. And I'm going to increase the size of the spotlight. I'm just going to bring that over to the left. Okay, so you'll notice that the, the manipulator for this is a bit different. You can see that you've got a cone coming out um, of this top point. And you also notice that you've got some different controls in this one as well. Um, so you've got these controls at the top. And then you've also got this Arnold drop down box down here, um, which will give you similar controls to the to what you had with the area light and um, so what I'll do is I'll increase the exposure first off and we're starting to see that come in now and then if we come up to the top here and um, we've got things like cone angle okay which changes the uh, radius uh, of the of the light we've got penumbra which you'll notice it changes the softness around the edge of that light source and drop off is a more in, intense um, fall off from from the center of the light to the outside I'm just interactively dragging in these boxes by holding the control key and left mouse clicking. So I'm just going to increase the drop off. 
maybe the penumbra a little bit. And then this decay rate, um, I'm, I don't think we, this actually does anything with, um, with the spotlight. By default, um, the Arnold lights have um, light attenuation sort of factored in to them. We can add, as a light filter, we can add um, some decay down here, which we'll talk about in a, in a, in a minute. Um, yeah, so again, I've got my color temperature. Perhaps let's bring this one down um, to a slightly warmer color. Okay, and we've we've got similar things. We've got we've got samples. Um, the radius is to do with the softness of the shadows. So it's 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 the radius of the of the light source. Okay, so by increasing that, you'll start to see that the just try and get some shadows on on the neck there. Okay, so at the moment we're set to zero. You can see the shadow in here is quite sharp. Not seeing much of an effect there. Let's um, let's just turn off our other light a minute. Okay, you can see that a bit clear, clearer now. So we were just looking at the wrong shadow. Um, so we've got the shadow going down across the neck as we increase that radius. You can see that the edges of that shadow are starting to soften. So we can increase that even more and that's softening even more. So it's just replicating the light source getting bigger and bigger. And as a light source gets bigger, the, the shadows get softer. So I'm going to position this light, but um, instead of positioning it in looking through it like we did last time, um, I'm going to point out um, that we have a tool inside of Maya called the Light Editor. Um, and that lives in the rendering editors and across to light editor and this is just a nice little i'm just going to sort the sort my windows out a little bit this is um yeah this is a nice editor because we can see um, all of the lights that, that are in our scene so if you can imagine you know you've got a big art, um, you know maybe you've created a, an interior um, space with a few different rooms um, you might have you know 10 or 20 different light sources in there and um, you know to be able to see them listed like this and, and sort of quickly come in and change the parameters is a, a really handy thing to be able to do. Um, but also there are other there are some other tools in here. So we can create light sources like we did up in the Arnold tab or the create tab. And also um, we can do things like this button here will allow us to look through, open and look through the through window for the light source that you're on. So it's similar to going up to look through selected. Um, apart from it, it tears off its own separate window, which is quite handy um, because you don't need to sort of switch in and switch out of um, different different cameras, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one as a sort of 
fill light. I'm going to change. Might try and switch back to my camera view. So it is a good idea um, sometimes just to have your lights isolated so you can so you can see exactly what's going on. And you can do that down here as well. So if I bring back my area light, you've got these buttons here, which are your isolate buttons. So if I want to isolate my spotlight, I can click on that. Or if I want to mute them, I can do that as well. So um, yeah, just using that that spotlight as a bit of a bit of a fill. Let's increase the cone angle a bit. And notice we're just sort of filling in these shadows a little bit down on the right hand side of the face. Okay, I think let's just dial the exposure back. So the thing that you will find when you're when you're lighting anything is it's it's about it's more about the interactivity um between the between the render view and and your lights and actually being able to see what's going on in you wanna get things as real time as possible. Um, so we've got a good, we've got a good feedback going on here. I might even increase the color of this light a bit more. And then maybe let's bring this one down just to make, make the effects quite quite obvious. Okay. Cool. So we've got a little fill light in there now. Um, we've got some other lights. So we've got things like a mesh light. Um, a mesh light will allow us to use a mesh. It's quite self-explanatory. She's a Taurus. seeing this seeing this twice because I'm selected on it which is a bit odd but um yeah if I want to turn this into a mesh light I just go up to Arnold counter lights and then hit the mesh light button that will bring up my settings on the right where I can do things like make the light visible and now if I increase this exposure you can see that we've got that geometry as a as a light source now. Um yeah, all the other controls pretty much pretty much the same. Um apart from we've also got show original mesh, which allows us to show the mesh and the, and the light at the same time. So you get some quite cool effects going on with the mesh light. And then we also have some IES lights, so photometric lights. Photometric lights are interesting, um, especially for things like archways, because um, 
they allow you to reference a file um, and file type is an IES file and these IES um, data sets um, you can actually find um, from different lighting manufacturers websites so um, there's some great just got a link over here there's some great um, profiles out there um, and I found a website earlier which um, someone has actually collated um, loads and loads of different manufacturers light source uh, lighting data sets um, and he's he's collated them all and put them all together but you can see really clearly in here um, what's going on with the with the light and you can see that it's it's replicating it's sort of this polar pattern that's um, replicating the way that the light would be emitted from from the different light sources so this can be really great for arch fears because if you're um, trying if you've got a, a model of a particular light that was um, going into you know going into a room then you could actually find um, the correct light lighting pattern for that as well um, yeah if um, you fancy donating there's a little PayPal button up here and you can click that and the the person who had collated them all was uh, Jürgen Führer um, so feel free to go over and, and donate if you feel inclined to do so um, yeah so we've got some IES lights I think I've got one downloaded so just going to browse off screen a second just to see if I can find that yeah okay so I'm just going to load that up and I'm just going to push it to the back wall what I'll do with my wall is I'll turn it a bit more into an infinity wall by pressing the 3 key just to smooth it out a bit um, and then I'm going to increase my ex exposure you can see here you've got this quite quite cool pattern um, going on and they can add a lot of um, interest into your scene we have similar controls again color temperature we have samples we have radius um, yeah okay other lights so sky dome light a sky dome light is um, a spherical light and um, you'll notice here spherical light and we have a color we have a color slot here um, so we can put block colors in we can change the in intensity and exposure and the resolution um, but what the um, what the sky dome light is is probably used for the most is um, for HDR images so um, there's a great website called Polyhaven um, so my N key is being a bit weird I can only type it in, in if I'm holding the shift key <laughs> which is odd um, Polyhaven it's a fantastic website um, and the guys uh, over here are doing a, a fantastic job on collating all these amazing resources um, so these are 360 images that have been um, that have been stitched together so that you can map them to a sphere so um, if we were to download this one for instance um, uh, we can actually come into the color slot hit the checker pattern here um, and find our file node go to the browser window 
find find the XR. Okay, and let's just take a moment just to convert to a .tx and let's just hide our environment. And now you can see that ours, our model is just being lit by that sky dome light. So this is this is this is great and a lot of the time you will want to see especially if you're doing look dev or like um you know you're you're trying to trying to see what an asset or a character or trying to see what something looks like in different lighting scenarios then um using those HDRs um HDR images are a great way to quickly um quickly see how how your model reacts to that that lighting and also for th things like reflections you know if you've got really shiny surfaces if you've got metals and things like that on your model then if you haven't got an environment for, for that to reflect then it's just going to be um reflecting black essentially so you know for anything reflective let's see now um nice thing about the sky dome again is that you can take the contribution of it out of the camera so you can take the take that down to zero um, if you're selected on it in this view, it will still be there, but I'm just going to deselect by hitting Alt-D. Alt and now you can see that we've still got the lighting from the from the um, environment, but we're not actually rendering those pixels. So that's quite nifty as well. So that's the Sky Dome. Let's bring back our other lights. And our cool. We've got physical sky, which is very similar to the sky dome, bar the fact that it's emulating a sort of time of day. So if I come back, you'll notice that in the color slot, we've got AI physical sky, um, and we have some different controls here. So we've got things like elevation, which changes the height of the sun. If I orbit around, I should be able to find that. And um, we've got azimuth, which is the sort of rotation angle, the rotation of that sun in the sky. We've obviously got um, so we've got intensity, we've got turbidity, so this is to do with the sort of the density of the particles in, in the air. We've got ground colour, ground albedo, um, sky tint, sky, uh, sun tint and sun size. Sun size is responsible for changing the softness of those shadows remember as the as some as um the light gets bigger those shadows get softer and then we've got we've got a light portal which um if you just click on tells you it needs a sky dome light in the scene so let's hide these lights put in a sky dome uh, 
I'm trying to think if this is going to show you well enough. Okay, so there's a light portal, there's a sky dome. As I'm increasing this, am I increasing the sky dome light here? Let's have a look. Right, so we've got our sky, sky dome here, um, and you'll notice that at the moment it's just evenly lighting our our actor and the stage. Um, the light portal essentially tells the renderer where to focus the energy. Okay, so it's not spending um, unnecessary you know, um, expense on um, rendering bounces around the scene where it doesn't really need to be. Um, by putting in light portals, um, it allows it allows you to basically optimize your rendering and speed up your rendering. Um, when I bring the, the light portal in here, the, the use case for this stuff really is, you know, interior, um, interior spaces, things like windows or doors that are connected to the outside, um, where you are, you are telling the renderer the light is coming through this window, and um, this is where I need you to, you know, spend your focus, your attention on. You, you notice as I'm as I'm moving this backwards, it's it's not having any bearing on on that but yeah so light portals are mainly for sort of interior interior spaces um windows doors and and those sorts of things um right bring back my lights Okay, that's that's pretty much all of them, and then we've just got um, directional light, which emulates an, a light source which is sort of infinitely far away, so um, often used as being like a sun or something like this, because you'll notice that you you just change the the rotation of this light. Doesn't matter where you place this in in your scene. Just gonna have to stop there in real quick. It doesn't matter where you place it in your scene. It's just to do with the rotation of this. And then we have things under the Arnold tab, so very similar to other light sources, exposure. We've got angle. Angle is essentially the the similar to the radius where it's softening those shadows. We've got samples, we've got normalize. And we again we've got color temperature in there as well. got point light so light that is a singular point and doesn't emit in any one particular direction but emits from you know in 360 degrees
Um, and yeah, we have all all the usual parameters in there again. Okay, so um, the only thing we haven't really covered there is really talking about these light filters. Um, so the light filters are, they change for different light sources. So um, I'm currently, let's select on the spotlight, go down to Arnold, have a look at what filters we have here. So we have an array of filters we have. Uh, a gobo, a barn door, light blocker, and light decay. And I think what I will do is I will just sort of go through what they do, and then I will um, break those down also in a in a future um, in a future video, um, because they will probably need a little bit more time spent on them um, in terms of you know functionality, but. Um, essentially a gobo is sort of like a stencil so we've got um, a slot for a slide map and if we you know you might want to use um, a gobo for replicating um, you know tree uh, leaves or sort of swaying in the wind or um, you know, blinds or, or curtains that are sort of moving around. And um, so you can you can put in animated textures in here, but they're, they're usually used on, on, you know, in film sets. Um, all of the terminology that you're seeing in here is based around, you know, real world concepts and um, Gobo is no different. If we just, you know, put in a Arnold an AI noise into that slot. Let's come in and have a look. You can see that it's not particularly fl um, flattering. However, we've got our pattern and the pattern is being projected from our light source. we can come in, we can change a few different parameters in there as well. Okay, we have a barn door. Um, a barn door is used to, you know, uh, change the shape of the of the main light source. So in this situation, we've got a, we've got a circular light. If we start to change some of these sliders, you can see that we're changing the shape of of that light source. I have to say that I haven't got I haven't got a lot of use out of the barn doors, but I can see absolutely how they how they would be useful in certain situations i just have to say that i i haven't personally used them um lots um but they are, but they exist and they are there to be used we have a light blocker um which when you Add to the filter list gives you a transform over in your in your outliner. If you bring that transform over, scale it up. Just going to increase my light a little bit. So we've got our density there set to one. Um, 
yeah, we've got our transform set to a box and anywhere we place that, it's going to act as, as a blocker and create that sort of shadow on, on the ground. It can be useful. Um, and we have different shapes in here that we can change it to. Um, we can also do a, a similar thing to the gobo in here with the shader, um, which is which is worth experimenting around with to to see if that gives any um, any cool effects. And finally, we have a light the light decay, um, which allows us to sort of attenuate. Um, the the intensity of our um, of the of the light source. So, just going to hide the area light and the photometric light. And I haven't, I haven't tried this out yet, um, but I thought perhaps we could. Um, Go up to the render settings and come down to our environment and add in an, an atmosphere. So I'm going to create an AI atmosphere volume, and um, you do have to be a, well, a little bit careful because um, these values are, are going to be minute. Okay, so often the temptation is to come in here and, and put a density of something like one. Um, but what you'll find is um, that that will just be really intense. Um, just allowing my computer to catch up with that. Okay. You can see how intense that that sort of cone of atmosphere atmosphere is. So you do really need small numbers here. So I'm going to try 0 0.001, and that's looking a lot better. So now you can see you've got um, you've got that atmosphere. And I thought this might be a nice way to visualize the the decay because we can see where the light source is, and then we can see the light over the over the course of its journey to hitting the floor. So let's go back into the light decay and use near attenuation and use far attenuation. And let's try increasing Near end and then I'll start far end. Okay, so increasing the far end here, you can see if you didn't want a light to to get quite as far as something else that's in the scene, perhaps this might be a nice way to to do that. Got far start, and then also we can we can change the intensity at the start of the light as well to create some quite you know subtle and quite eerie effects in there as well, which is quite cool. Okay, I'm going to come back out of that now. Okay, so they are the the light filters that you can use with your with your lights as well. Um, let's just bring our lights back. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm just thinking whether I need to talk through the, the light groups. Um, and yeah, maybe as just a, a, a final point, 
Um, it would be good to mention the light editor and the and the light mixer as well. Um, in the later versions, so I you know, I think Arnold and Maya brought it in in twenty twenty two point one perhaps um, something like that. Um, but they they brought in these these images which allows us to um, you know add post processing effects to our, to our renders. Um, so I'm not going to be able to do this in the viewport. So I'm just going to open up the Arnold render view um, so that I can access using the, the cog. If I click on that. You can see here that you've got um, the ability to add images in here. So I'm going to start my rendering in the Arnold render view now. I've got my light editor and if we go add imager come down to our light mixer you'll notice down here we've got this um, these parameters for light groups and in the light editor we have the ability to add our lights to light groups um so we've got this little circle with the plus which says create a new light group and um, so if i it's really handy um because we can bunch lights together and then we can we can change their intensity um after you know after the fact so i'll call this just call this spotlights I'll create another one Drag that out of the group and call this key light. Call this one I yes. And I'll just drag each of those under the corresponding light group. And just lastly, I will come into each of the lights and change the the light group name in here. So, and I'm just going to give it the name that it that, of the group that I have placed it within. So this one will be key light. This one will be spotlights. This one will be IES. I might need to refresh using this button here. And now what you should be able to do is we can do things like we can solo. Okay, so I'm just looking at the spotlight now. Uh, maybe I haven't added them correctly. Let's just double check. So we've got our key light. That's our spotlight. That's our IES. It looks right to me. So let's just... I'm going to go to render update full scene. Just take a moment to update that.
Okay, that's better. Spotlights. Key light. IES. So, I have the power now to be able to, you know, to bring these back. So we're sort of mixing our lights. So we can change the intensity. We can add tints to these lights. That's just really powerful. Being able to do this after this after the render, you know, you 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 might you might want to make some subtle changes and not have to go back into the render and do all do all that. Um, wait wait for that render again. So yeah, light groups, again, a really powerful tool. We also have some different images in here that I would, um, yeah, I would encourage you to have a little play around with, have things like bloom under the lens effects, um, exposure. We have some denoises in here as well, um, which help speed up um, your renders. Um, we've got color correctors, etc., etc. Um but yeah, I think, you know, I just hit hit the hour mark. So I'm probably going to cut it there um, and, um, you know, follow up this, um, this lighting fundamentals tutorial um, and start to, start to dig in with some other concepts. So, um, you know, looking at proper sort of three point lighting setup um, in a studio. I'm going to be looking at some Rembrandt lighting. Um, we're going to be looking at, um, you know, some uh, lighting, some props and vehicles um, and just talking about um, the best ways of, of, of doing that. Um, and yeah, just sort of getting stuck into all those different, different um, scenarios that you, that you will find yourself coming across um, when, when you're having to, start lighting your scenes or lighting your props etc or telling a particular story um but yeah just want to say massive thank you very much for um watching the video please um be very grateful for a little subscribe to the to the channel and um yeah you know don't don't hesitate to um to leave a comment under the video as well that'd be much appreciated we'd love to um here you know um here from you guys all right nice one cheers bye bye